We have uh, decided that we wanted to be able to highlight some of the candidates around the country that are really, truly winnable. And beyond winnable, they are um, candidates that are in the, you know, cut from the cloth of Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, or Mike Lee. I have not met this man, but uh, many of my friends and uh, Freedom Works, Matt Kibbe, has compared him to Ted Cruz and Rand and Mike. Um, he is running for Senate against the Democrat Kay Hagan in North Carolina. His name is Greg Brannon. Welcome to the program, Greg. Oh, Mr. Beck, what an honor. Thank you, Thank sir. you so much. Thank you. Um, so you're an OBGYN. You have uh, seven children, so you know what's causing that. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you're obviously a successful guy. Why would you ever go into politics? Well, first off, I believe it's a servant citizen in our politics, sir. You and I, and I'm 53. I know you had your birthday. Our generation is going to pass on a less free America unless we stand. And I'm not going to look at my children's face and the, the honor of 9,000 babies I delivered. And 15 years from now, they say, where were you in the fight for liberty? This is 1770s all over again. And uh, I've had the honor of listening to you since, I think, 2002 when I heard you next time for the first time. Wow. The, uh, the Lee, the Cruz, the Pauls, that's our future of our country. It's just going back to our foundational core beliefs and who we are. And I'm not going to sit here on the sidelines. I was raised by a single mom who raised myself and my younger brother. And she said, this country's phenomenal. It's not succeeding when it's the opportunity to keep getting up every time we fail. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be silent in this battle. So North Carolina was a red state until 2008. Uh, Kay Hagan was a big supporter of uh, Obamacare. How's that working out for her now? <laughs> not so well. And uh, the thing about, you know, I actually read Obamacare, H.R. 3590. I read Dodd-Frank. I believe in knowing how things work and why. And that's what I went back to. This passion I had. You, I listened to you way back when when you said – I actually had this letter now where, you, where Jefferson wrote to his nephew, challenge everything. And yeah. we had to challenge I, this idea of who we really are. And it led me to ask myself two questions. Who is sovereign and what is a legitimate role of government? And both those are answered in the second paragraph of Jefferson's declaration. We're made in God's image, so we're sovereign. We have inalienable rights from life, the moment of conception, to natural passing, liberty with freedom and responsibility, and the pursuit of happiness. The very next sentence says what the legitimate government is. To protect, to protect Glenn, your inalienable rights as individuals. We're given our consent not to be ruled over, but to have a, the consent to govern, equal opportunity. That, in the moment they overstep those bounds, that is tyranny. And then Jefferson listed 20 things he said tyrannical. Uh, our Constitution is, is actually you know, empowers those in the, in the limit of the federal government. And I'm just, everything you know, I'm just pumped to be out here, but we have to make this Constitution what it means. That's what Washington challenged So how are you going to, Greg, how are you going to be able to, um, I mean, because you're speaking, you're, I mean, you're singing songs to me right now, mm -hmm. but I speak, you know, I speak Thomas Jefferson. And so I relate to that. But most of the country, they don't care about Thomas Jefferson. You know, 20-somethings don't care about Thomas Jefferson. And... We have sold our rights away for security. We have sold our rights away for um, uh, money or stuff. And most people will say, oh, please, it's not so bad. While we're losing um, the right to choose our doctors, while we're losing the right to um, pursue our happiness, we're losing our right to not be spied on by the IRS or by the uh, NSA, losing our right to to be innocent until proven guilty in a court of law with a jury of our peers. So how do you yeah. fight this? Well, Glenn, I, I think you're, you're actually knocking down all the great work you've done. I mean, I believe the Rand Pauls, the Mike Lees, the Ted Cruz, if they were not there, I'd be more pessimistic. But since we've seen that move, the true Tea Party movement, the true Tea Party movement, I see it's actually going the other way around. Wait, 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 wait. Last... Before you go on, what is the true Tea Party movement? What do you mean by the that? The true Tea Party is constitutional to original intent, right? It is not being trying to be sure up for the established Republicans to make sure that that's all they vote for. The true intent of the Tea Party, the true intent of the Constitution is expressed clearly in the Ted Cruz's, the Mike Lee's, the Rand Paul's. And we've been honored enough to be endorsed by, by Rand Paul and, his, and Freedom Works is an honor. So I think we have to go back to those documents. Now, taking this message, we've done this. I had, I had a, uh, a Tea Party group called Founders Truth. Last five years, we've been speaking around the state. And this message of liberty, individualism, is actually scaring Ms. Hagan and my opponent, Ms. Tillis, crazy because 
these hyphen polls, I believe America is many one, as you do, but you know, we have 24% of African Americans voting for us who are on the polls, 20% of Hispanics. We are number two in women under Hagen and number one under the age of 28. This message wow. of individualism and true American exceptionalism is scaring the progressive establishment mm. to death, Glenn. But I'm telling you, the work you've done, the work that the the normal grassroots has done is scaring them to death. It truly is, quote unquote, a house of cards, and they see it. So and that's why my opponent, Mr. Tillis, is for private public partnerships. He needs for state exchanges. That's not Republicanism. No, that's the Republican Party. Yeah, exactly. So when you have a Republican Party that is is going there, I mean, I I truly believe that the Republicans will either change or they will go the way of the Whigs. I'm not afraid of a third party because I don't believe that there would be three parties left. Uh, the, the Republicans would just collapse because nobody's passionate about the Republicans. What people are passionate about is they don't want a third party. And the ones who are passionate about the GOP are the ones that are holding the power. And so that whole thing just collapses and goes away, just like the communists supposedly did in the former Soviet Union. How do you go and change the the Republican Party itself when the Republican Party is so damned? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, the Whigs, the Federalists, they've messed up, and they, they, they lost the, the, the actual true belief who we are, and they went away. I believe what Reagan said was why, when he was asked, why did you leave the Democratic Party? He says, no, they left me. I'm in the same position. I believe the party, the, the Fife Republican Party, it, it is Reagan and Goldwater and Taft and Coolidge. This is because these, the Boehners and McConnell are saying in other ways, this is exposing them. This is exposing who they are, which is great because the true rank and file Republican and conservative Democrats uh, are, are, are liberty loving constitutionals. They're looking for men and women who will honor their oath in Article 6. We do that, the paradigm shift happens. So I'm optimistic in this because. I've seen it. We've traveled about 88,000 miles as we're around the state. I'm still on call every day. I deliver about 20 babies a month, and uh, I'm just being that servant citizen but prepared. I mean, I mean, Glenn, you don't know what you've done by encouraging everybody to read, to challenge the status quo. Those kind of things have empowered you feel I was up there in August of 10. I was right to the right of the stage. I was there with that. I saw what was occurring. The establishment on both parties – think they could control that or they're going to ridicule it and right. and they're going to lose because we the people are back we're not going to settle for frauds that's why the center lees the center Cruz, the center pauls the massey the amashes <laughs> the becks you see this thing <laughs> happening i'm not joking because you had the samuel adams you had the writers you had the guys right. saying that and then you had the men fighting it you know the names of jefferson and madison are great but what about the nameless men and women that ran to lexington concord they ran to bunker hill and how about their wives at home taking care of the family no nea they educated themselves they challenged they challenged they asked questions and god's grace was on them because they stood true to that I mean, Glenn, we're having a 1770s all over again, and we're looking for who's real. And where, this is what's exciting. So, where do you stand? Um, where do you stand on immigration reform? Immigration is simple. In the Constitution, Article Four, it's very clear: sovereign borders. In this, without sovereign borders, there's no sovereign country. We are built by legal immigration. Many one. That's the American culture. No, well, but, but okay, Mister Hater. Um, <laughs> Uh, how are you going to uh, how are you going to solve all those that are living in the shadows? And let me do what I, every media person ever does. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Maria, who was brought here at no far fault of her own That's right. by parents who by are just parents. trying to She's been uh, here all her life? Been here all her life. Is she not an American, sir? Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite papers on integration was written by James Madison, eighteen hundred report of eighteen hundred. He's writing for President Jefferson on the any talking about immigration and they were discussing back then even if it's the blood of the mother the blood of the father or the blood of both and they discussed it back in that ideas but back to this the responsibility of the child is the parent the bottom line is we're built on legal immigration and yes we're going to be attacked on this but as you know you, you brought the nsa they can collect all the data on our phone right now as we're speaking we can find a way to see who is here how they got here, they got to go to the back of the line amnesty look what happened when ronald reagan and george hw did that it destroyed right. california 
The answer is no, we must stand firm to this. And the, and the, the hater cracks me up. I mean, you said I had seven children. I do know how, how it works. I, <laughs> well, I mean, you can prevent that. I just. <laughs> well, I, I have six girls and one boy, and you know, babies are great, but we've been very fortunate. The last three little girls we adopted from China. And, um, wow. you know, mm. I, 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 I understand what America is. I was born in, in Inglewood, California. Again, I understand this country special because it is the many one. And it, but it must, be, it must be legal. I lived in Mexico for two years. I understand this idea of what, how about the ones that came here legally? They don't want this. We need sovereign borders or we're not a sovereign country. Well, the other That's reason, the, line. the other thing about um, sovereign borders is, I mean, you, you don't, if you're not giving away free stuff, you, you'll you see things slow down uh, dramatically. You'll see it things, away. I mean, we, we before the progressive era, we didn't really have, you know, this kind of problem like we have now. People just generally find themselves, you know, going where they go. And honestly, I don't mind immigrants. I, I think immigrants make us much, much stronger. So I want I immigration. I want the people here. But but you got to you got to you have to challenge me. And the, the, the reason why we're weak is because we, we don't feel challenged anymore. I want somebody competing, you know, for my job and competing uh, for what's going on. And, and come on, let, let's go. May the best man win. I, I agree. And that's the idea about the model. Many won, right? That, I talk about an alloy, a single metal strong. You get multiple metals into an alloy. It's unbreakable. That's the American. When you talked about the, the Statue of Liberty with the chain being broken off coming to us, we don't want feudalism again. Wow. We want individualism, <laughs> societies at the best, Glenn, when we have the opportunity to succeed and fail. That's the American exceptionalism, and I'm, I'm proudly part of this. I will tell you, Greg, that I don't think, besides Rand Paul, I don't think I've ever talked to a candidate that has, that has quoted more or listened to the show or read the show more than uh, you have, and I appreciate that. So that leads me to what's the question I'm going to ask you? How's my soul? How is it? <laughs> How is well, it? I'm a, how's my soul? Well, I'm in this because of a, of a of, I'm a born again Christian. I understand. I've been stabbed in the back by Christians as well. I understand that, but I feel this is a spiritual battle. Romans twelve nine is a verse that hits my in the heart. It says, "Hate evil, cling to good." But the first two words are the most important, Glenn. And this is how we change hearts. It says, "In genuine love, we go to people that disagree with us. We go to them as Americans, as as loving and kindness, and discuss these things. Mm. This is what we do." And we understand the federal government. We understand the state government. There are different dual federalisms. We walk them through this. I mean, Glenn, if we did not have what we had the last 10, 15 years, I would be, again, pessimistic. We take our founding principles. We messed up at the beginning because of pigment of skin, because of women's gender. But we show our problems. We go through those. We're the best republic the world's ever seen because we stood to those. We do those, Glenn. Our grandchildren will look back at us and thank us. Or they're going to ridicule us, and I and I want to be on that front line with you. So, Greg, uh, according to the to the polls in uh, North Carolina, it looks like your bigger your your bigger task might be in the primary against Tills than it even is. I mean, you're already ahead of of Hagen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the difference between you and uh, Speaker Tills? It, very simple. He's backed by a guy named Carl Rove. McConnell and Boehner funded. Oh, is him. he really? Dear God! Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. He he will not debate us. He is for public-private partnerships. He's for toll roads. He's for every. He calls himself conservative now, but he'll never come to a debate. Never debate us. He mm. believes the federal government is supersedes on everything. And just look at his record. But I want to make something. We're running for something. We will show his record, and I hope he comes in the base. We're running for a job to be ambassador of our sovereign state, as if there's no Seventeenth Amendment. And you must understand that contract. If you can't, you cannot lead. I, I, I have to tell you, uh, Greg, mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of I've talked to a lot of politicians. I've talked to a lot mm -hmm. of uh, candidates, and it usually takes me a while to warm up to them before I trust them. You mm -hmm. are so well read. You are so well thought out. I believe you. I mean, you are perhaps the best candidate I have ever talked to the first time out of the shoot. I mean, you're oh, amazing. Man. You're amazing. You guys, sir, I'm, 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 I'm totally blown away and honored. I just believe liberty is so simple, and that's why I'm, I'm no Johnny Come Lately Common Core. Are you, horribly, are you horribly disfigured by, by an acid accident or anything? <laughs> because you should be running away with this. <laughs> uh, we, we, actually, we actually, the numbers are tremendous, and um, we... Uh, 
when you look at all the, the internal stuff, that, that, that's why they're scared to death of us. That's why Reverend Al, you know, tries to hammer us on MSNBC. We know the polls, and we're whooping their rear end, and it's exciting. And if they won't come for the fight, fine. They can attack me all they want. When they're done attacking, the only person getting attacked at Holloman is me. And when they get done doing that, let's debate the issues. Because the issue is Common Core is an anthema. Gen 21 is an anthema. Obamacare is an anthema. That's not wow. America. That's wow. why you guys, is, your new school system is booming. i got a patient of mine actually doing your curriculum. Uh, I've started a couple of schools, my wife and I. We actually homeschool now. I want to understand. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I love you. I, may, we, I have a Wait. man crush. I have a man crush on you. <laughs> Greg, I have a man crush. You go anymore, I might start sending you candy. <laughs> well, you know what? Sherry's berries are fine. We'll take care of Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, guys. But, but we, but we actually, obviously, we, we need to raise money. We're raising good, but we actually got. Well, how would I mean? How would is how would somebody help? Is there? Well, let is me there tell a you way? this, guys. We got a web page called Greg Brandon for slash Glenn. You go there and donate and give us the ammunition to take this war. But I, <laughs> Greg Brandon for slash Glenn. Greg Brandon for slash Glenn. Let's do this and get the funds. But I really, I'm really honored to be here, guys. I mean. I sat on my couch five years ago and said, what can I do? And the doors got have opened is my general consultant is mm. Rand Paul, is my political director, is deputy for Cruz. I have Brand and Freedom Works, Mike Church. I have uh, uh, Deadly Brown from National Association of Gun Rights. I mean, this is Ann Coulter. Um, we got a team mm. of liberty lovers All right. that are saying no more. Greg, I hope to talk to you again. I, I, I'm, I'm actually very um, – I'm looking forward to shaking your hand and congratulating you on uh, being uh, the next good senator uh, from uh, North Carolina. Thank you so much, uh, Greg. My honor, sir. Thank All you right. for your great work, man. It's uh, com. Greg, uh, Greg com. That was good. Uh, sponsor.